Peace, blessings, and black love. This is Amaja Away to coming to you black at it again. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a visual, so I do want you to take some time out to look at your screen. So to look at the video so you can see a sort of kind of understand what it is that I'm getting at. Again, I'm doing these things basically to show you guys what the state of black America is. I'm after the men. I'm trying to awaken the fighting spirit in the men. Men have different fighting spirits. Some are toe to toe. Some is face to face. Some is behind closed closed doors and some is just strategic secretly and strategically moving in a manner where it benefits the collective so i don't expect everybody to go out there and pick it sign brother i don't expect everybody to go out there and do that but i do expect for you to understand that we we are at war and we are going to have to choose a side um one of the issues I, I try to explain as far as black women are concerned, for the most part, you're going to have to leave black women alone. Now, that doesn't mean every and all, because there are some women out here that are really doing their thing. Well, those women are never going to ever be thrown in that discard pot. They deserve recognition. They deserve recognition for staying married. They deserve recognition for not putting their spouses on child support. They deserve recognition for not involving the law in all their business. They, de they deserve recognition for um, fighting the law in order to comply with their mate. Some women deserve recognition. Some black women deserve recognition. So I'm not saying that black women all A-L-L aren't worth saving. Not saying that. I'm saying as a collective full body, 95% of them are not worth saving. You're going to have to come to grips with this. Well, so what about black men? Black men aren't worth saving. 95% of them aren't worth saving. Not only do we have a slave mentality, a slave class, we have a degenerate class. So even if we were free in our own land, these individual people groups or sectors will still be too much to contain and control because they just simply outnumber us. So when I do these videos and I'm trying to give you guys a number percentage and where where the in it where the hemorrhage is coming from, I'm trying to get you guys to wake up and understand that we're gonna have to move on. We're gonna have to leave these people right where they're at and not feel any remorse about it. Natural selection is taking its course. You want to survive, you have to do specific things to survive. You don't want to survive, oh well. And I don't care what comes out of your mouth. Your actions does not align with the words coming out of your mouth. Kill them all. Kiggy Kiggy didn't kill him. And we are at a point where the men, I'm trying to awaken, awaken the men. This rainbow coalition, just because you want to have access to their women, it doesn't exist. This rainbow coalition, just because you want to have access to their men, it doesn't exist. Yes, there was a time when it did exist. That was the beginning. But since white America has secretly came to them and said, hey, we will allow you or let you integrate into the system of white supremacy as long as you are able to and or willing to use your proximity to people of color against black folks in America and attack them, keeping them at the bottom will will give you a pass. So people of color, even though they're brown skin, they're going to do the same thing they did to us in which they did to some of the indigenous Indians, which means just like the Indians got the reservations and got their reparations and got their casinos and got their monies, they're going to do the same thing to blacks. They're going to use blacks to get their polit the political footing. They're going to use black Americans to get their economic economical footing. And then in enough time, they're going to separate from black Americans saying we, we weren't that we weren't rocking with you all the whole time. Well, the reason why I'm doing these videos is to get you to understand the truth behind the lie. The issue isn't that me, we, our people type are causing a disturbance to your peace. The issue is, is you, you would rather have peace over justice. 
So when you hear us commun when you hear us bring it up. When you hear us talk about it, you're agitated. Then, oh, here we go again. There's always somebody talking about it. That's what you're saying because you're scared of white people. Well, I want you to listen to this, these audio recordings because I believe there's three that I was able to get off of YouTube. And I want you to hear how they themselves are going to tell you that they themselves have a black and brown issue within their own community that they are prejudiced towards black Americans. Roll it. So you look at it right here, Hector Garcia from the um, American GI Forum. He said, we are not and have never been a civil rights organization. Personally, I hate the word. Now, a John Herrera of LULAC, the president back in 1952, he said, Latin Americans of Mexican descent belong to the Caucasian race and therefore white. Now you look Felix T. Arena, which a lot of people quotes that a lot. He said, let the Negro fight his own battles. His problems are not mine. I don't want to ally with him. And you have a Gus Garcia. He said that I know Negroes aren't getting their full share of democracy, but frankly, I'm prejudiced against Negroes. And I do not believe that they are entitled to anything that we get. So you look at it right here, Hector Garcia from the, um, American GI Forum. He said, we are not and have never been a civil rights organization. Personally, I hate the word. Now, a John Herrera of LULAC, the president, back in 1952, he said, Latin Americans of Mexican descent belong to the Caucasian race and therefore white. Now you look Felix T. Arena, which a lot of people quotes that a lot. He said, let the Negro fight his own battles. His problems are not mine. I don't want to ally with him. And you have a Gus Garcia. He said that I know Negroes aren't getting their full share of democracy, but frankly, I'm prejudiced against Negroes. And I do not believe that they are entitled to anything that we get. So you look at it right here, Hector Garcia from the um, American GI Forum. He said, we are not and have never been a civil rights organization. Personally, I hate the word. Now, a John Herrera of LULAC, the president, back in 1952, he said Latin Americans of Mexican descent belong to the Caucasian race and therefore white. Now, you look Felix T. Arena, which a lot of people quotes that a lot. He said, let the Negro fight his own battles. His problems are not mine. I don't want to ally with him. And you have a Gus Garcia. He said that I know Negroes aren't getting their full share of democracy, but frankly, I'm prejudiced against Negroes, and I do not believe that they are entitled to anything that we get. Take a look at what council members were dealing with inside. People packing the council chambers, demanding that Nuri Martinez, Kevin DeLeon, and Gil Cedillo step down immediately. The council members were heard on an audio recording making racist comments during a redistricting meeting, during a redistricting meeting, during a redistricting meeting, during a redistricting meeting last year. One day later, Martinez stepped down as council president. Yesterday, she announced a leave of absence, just shy of giving up her District 6 seat. She didn't attend yesterday's meeting. Meanwhile, Cedillo and De Leon made brief appearances before being forced out by the loud crowd. Council member Mike Bonin, whose son was the focus of racial comments made by Martinez, took the floor during the meeting yesterday. Man, that makes my soul bleed, and it makes my temper burn, and I know I'm not alone because Los Angeles has spoken and it feels the same way. I want to be able to forgive the offenses against me and my family and I, I want to lead with, with love and uh, generosity and, and model the world we need to create. And I promise you I'll try. They all should resign. The language that was used and tolerated during that conversation was unacceptable and it was appalling. Uh, they should all step down Boosted me because let's talk about this shit because this shit is so fucking true a lot of hispanic and latino parents will literally try to teach you at a young age to not be friends with black people a lot of hispanic and latino parents will literally try to teach you at a young age to not be friends with black people a lot of hispanic and latino parents will literally try to teach you at a young age to not be friends with black people a lot of hispanic and latino parents will literally try to teach you at a young age to not be friends with black people and it's fucking disgusting. They show you racism, anti-blackness, like colorism at a fucking young age. You could be a dark skinned Latino and yet you will get a lot of fucking hate.
Not only that, media, media will even fucking show that shit too. Where literally they show that white Latinos are literally rich, smart, educated, and they're always holy. But when it comes to black people or Afro Latinos, they're ghetto, they're poor, uneducated, and they're criminals. And not only that, not only that, a lot of these celebrities believe this shit too. And also, they do blackface. And that's why a lot of people don't want to unite when it comes to the Hispanic and Latino community because of the amount of fucking anti-blackness, the racism towards black people. And not only that, y'all forget that literally black people have influenced our fucking community so much from technology, from food, to even music. And not only that, y'all forget that literally black people have influenced our fucking community so much from technology, from food, to even music. And not only that, y'all forget that literally black people have influenced our fucking community so much from technology, from food, to even music. And not only that, y'all forget that literally black people have influenced our fucking community so much from technology, from food, to even music. And some of y'all bitches be dancing to those music that literally were influenced by black people. I'm not talking about black racism toward Hispanic people because black people are not siding with the side of the oppressor. The Hispanic and Latino people that I'm talking about in this video are siding with the white oppressors. They saw somebody like Donald Trump come up in the ranks and do nothing but blast their entire race and saw that and saw the proximity to acceptance and whiteness in America and were like, yeah, why are they crossing the border illegally? Knowing some of the places that your families and your ancestors come from and how because of capitalism, because of colonialism, they've been ravaged and corrupted and there's literal murder grounds. You know where some of those people are coming from to seek refuge, to become citizens. And you also know, probably, how hard the immigration process is here, especially if you're not from a white country. The first part about this statement is understanding that racism is systemic in this country. There are quite literally levels to this. Shit. And if black people have any racial bias toward Hispanic and Latino people, it's more than likely historically and systematically going backward coming from the odd acceptance of Latino and Hispanic people into the country, whilst never admitting the wrongdoings to black people in this country, how they have built the country up, and how they have never gotten their just dues for literally the blood off their backs. And as fellow minorities, much in the way that black people might look toward the Asian community or the Middle Eastern community, um, there might be some spitefulness because no matter how much black people have put into this country, every other race will get put before them. And white people will use you guys as pawns against the black people to be like, well, they're doing fine. Well, they're doing okay. Look at them. And sorry, no tea, no shade, but a lot of other minorities lift their chins up to that praise from the white people. They start walking a little straighter, holding their head a little higher, and then they start getting uppity toward black people. And all of this while telling your family members to breed lighter, um, reinstating white stereotypes of black people. They're violent, they're loud, they steal, they're untrustworthy. Meanwhile, you were allowed to move into their neighborhoods, open stores in their neighborhoods, get jobs that they weren't allowed to get. Does the man exploit you and pay you less for those jobs? Absolutely, and that sh But most Hispanic and Latino people that have immigrated to this country are chasing that American dream that never really existed for anyone that isn't a straight Christian white person. And you get so tied up in it that you don't realize that you're regurgitating the same racist rhetoric that your white oppressors used against you toward them now. No one has been disrespected like black people in this country. Nine times out of ten when black people don't like a group, it's because of oppression. <sighs> That's a lie. There is a fun little beauty in being ethnically and racially ambiguous. And that comes in the form of multiple racial groups thinking that they are in a comfortable zone around you. 
because they think that you are some way relative to them. I have heard white people say the worst I've ever heard behind closed doors because they might have thought I was white. And I have had so many different groups of Hispanic and Latino people in Los Angeles specifically say around me because they thought that they were in close company. I lived in the heart of Hollywood through Trump's run. And let me tell you something. It was literally vomit inducing. The amount of Hispanic and Latino people that were in front of the CNN building on Sunset, that were in front of the uh, Vine Tower, that were up on Hollywood Boulevard marching for Trump, guarding his star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame because people were breaking it. Some weird ass lap dog happened with a lot of Hispanic and Latino people in Los Angeles when Trump became president. And that's what I'm trying to tell you guys is it's okay. You can say, yeah, these people exist in my group without taking on the brunt of that group. But usually when you take on a broad spectrum statement personally, it means it's inside of you, baby. See, I could look at your comment because you said blacks um, and tell that you're probably one of these people I'm talking about. You probably heard your elders talking. You've probably talked with your friends. The blacks started the beef. I'd love to know how. Because that whole gang was going on back in the 80s and 90s. Everyone was involved in that. So let's wipe that out for a second. And let's talk about who's doing shit now. Because despite the fact that black people's music, style, clothing gets taken from them, despite the fact that there's this weird urge with Latino people to say the N-word, black people still showed up and rallied for the kids that were in the cages. Black people still showed out and spoke up for Latino and Hispanic people getting called border jumpers, getting told they're from whole countries, getting called rapists and murderers. It was black civil rights leaders, social coordinators, politicians, and Congress people who were rallying for the rights of the DACA children. But time and time again, black people show out for everyone else and everyone else has a problem showing it back for them. 10 years is a long time. And I had a decade's worth of experience in LA. This inherently, inherently puts us at a advantage. As if anyone who has done Latin American studies or is like familiar with like the racialized politics of being Latina in the US, if they can do it, this please do by all means. This is painful work, but we really have to reflect on the anti-blackness within our communities, and we also have to accept that being Latina, being a woman of color. We can also reaffirm white supremacy. We, it's so fucking nuanced. And as someone who has worked for council members and who has worked in local politics, if this has taught me anything, you can't put these elected officials on a pedestal because at the end of the day, they are public servants. Emphasis and heavy on the public servants. It's a damn shame because I really, really did look up to KDL, Kevin DeLeon. I took a course with him at UCLA when I was an undergrad. Um, he was one of my biggest inspirations given the fact that at one point he was the face of Latino politics within the state of California. And he was very influential. So this is just deeply, deeply hurtful. So you saw the point that she talked about that they have actually more privilege in America than black people do. Now, the guy last week that we had covered here, he said the exact same thing. He said that we benefit from what black people fought and died for, and we're more privileged in America than they are because of our proximity uh, to whiteness. This is what um, the guy last week said, and this woman saying the same thing. But once again, I said that they let them be a buffer group but they have them in a trick bag at the same time because of the immigration status. You know, they give them a lot of low, you know, paid low end jobs. They want them to basically do slavery work. That's what they want them to do. And because the white supremacist, if he's favoring you, it's something to it. It's something he's benefiting from. And if you look at the average salary um, it, with Latinos, they actually make less money than black people. And it's supposed to be more of them here. So it lets you know how low ball they are in, in their economics. It's done by design. But in this particular system here, and you know, people coming from, 
you know, Mexico and different other places that have anti-black racism that goes all through Latin America. This is why a lot of black people say, you know what, I'm getting good on this immigration deal. And this, that stuff needs to stop. Um, you know, we had so joined up with these Republicans to put a stop to these, this immigration. I said, because listen, we don't need to be importing more white supremacists in here. We got enough to deal with right here in America. But what's happening in America is that it seems like God is, is revealing to us that we have to cut off all groups from us. We talking about on a collective sense. We're not talking about individual people we know or no, we're not talking about individuals. We're talking about collective sense, a political sense, right? And realize we have to look out for self. We need to do for self. We have to seek political power for black people, not everybody, for black people. But what's happening in America is that it seems like God is, is revealing to us that we have to cut off all groups from us. We're talking about on a collective sense. We're not talking about individual people we know or no, we're not talking about individuals. We're talking about collective sense, a political sense, right? And realize we have to look out for self. We need to do for self. We have to seek political power for black people, not everybody, for black people. But what's happening in America is that it seems like God is, is revealing to us that we have to cut off all groups from us. We're talking about on a collective sense. We're not talking about individual people we know or no, we're not talking about individuals. We're talking about collective sense, a political sense, right? And realize we have to look out for self. We need to do for self. We have to seek political power for black people, not everybody, for black people. But what's happening in America is that it seems like God is, is revealing to us that we have to cut off all groups from us. We're talking about on a collective sense. We're not talking about individual people we know or no, we're not talking about individuals. We're talking about collective sense, a political sense, right? And realize we have to look out for self. We need to do for self. We have to seek political power for black people, not everybody, for black people. Because as you could clearly heard on those tapes with uh, Nuri Martinez in the gang, they are looking out for political power for their group. See, everybody else is focusing on power while a lot of you focus in on getting your feelings about Democrat and Republican. I don't like him, I don't like her. Calling people names all day, all the name calling, we great at name calling people, but what are we gonna do to deal with making sure black people are secure? Protecting even what we have now, because just because you have it don't mean you can't lose it. You understand? Even in the South, there's a lot of black people, but you need to start owning the South too. You need to start owning your neighborhoods, owning the businesses, because if you're not owning anything, people can come right in and get you out of it. A so-called black area can see what happened to LA. That was done by design. South Central, Inglewood, all in place like that was predominantly black. Compton, all black. Now, black people hardly there anymore and it's all Mexican done by design with the Democrat party with unchecked illegal immigration. So yes, it has to be clamped down on it. Matter of fact, it needs to stop. They need to stop immigration for, for, for the next 10 years. Stop immigration for, for, for the next 10 years. Stop immigration for, for, for the next 10 years. Stop immigration for, for, for the next 10 years. Stop immigration. Stop immigration. Stop immigration. Stop immigration. So just to make it clear, what I was trying to get you guys to do is just listen to the information not necessarily always interfere or interrupt the information let it flow you guys are under this concept or mindset that just because you have access to some of their women and for you females that are listening you have you're under the mindset just because you can divest and have sex with some of their men that we as a community are allied together with these people groups and in one of the videos, I forgot what I titled it, but I did read off to you guys the um, Congressional Hispanic Caucus. I also read off to you guys verbatim the um, Congressional Island Asian Pacific Caucus as well. So all of us have our political people groups caucuses in which we are supposed to answer to or information or policies are supposed to come up with, right? So think of it as if it's like a labor union 
I report to them, or a lawyer, I report to them what my problems are. Then they analyze it, they research, they do whatever, yada, yada, yada. Then they'll take it up to your politician or your governor or your senator or the president. It's like a, a ladder, tier of sorts. What you guys are under misunderstanding with white supremacy racism is you don't understand how it works. In, in a nutshell, you just don't understand how it works. And for those that do understand how it works, what they've learned how to do is they learn how to find a, a nuance. They've learned a lane that they can survive within. So for them, it's not that they don't understand. It's that they're okay as long as they get to have sex, as long as they get to have socialization, as long as they get to have academics, as long as they get to have capital, as long as they get to have this, that, and the third socialite, they're fine. And they're not going to speak about it. They're not going to speak in favor of it, nor are they going to speak against it. They're pretty much going to live a life of ignorance. But when we say that word ignorance or denial, when we say these words, we don't mean it in its literal sense all of the time because the words are interchanging. The words are synonyms. What they are mainly after is, is not being acknowledged or called out or saying that they have to reach back. There is no black and brown coalition. Even though in history, you can pick out a time in which Mexicans did do certain things to help the slaves, things have changed. Mexicans aren't on their own land and not wanting to come to America. Do you guys understand that difference, that ingredient, that nuance, that specificity? What needs to be spoken of is 200 years ago, they did not want to come to America in large mass. So when black slaves at that time ran down into Mexico, it was clear and it was understood. We're in, those white boys are our enemies and we know that they're mistreating you. So you can come down here and get some refuge. You can come down here and get some land. You can come down here and as long as you don't disturb what we got, what we got going on, you, you can stay. We good. Well, when they started to let Mexicans in, Honduras, South Americans, Brazilians, when they started to let other people groups in, this is where the, 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 the history becomes obsolete because the intent changes. Mexicans, Mexico, they did not build up their country not to be a world power or compatible with the United States. They didn't build it like they built up Canada. Canadians aren't really running here for economics and resources. Canadians are running to the United States simply because of variety. Hispanics, Mexicans, Puerto Ricans, Guatemalans, El Salvadorians, any kind of other in Caribbean, Jamaican, African, any other kind of other in is running to the United States for economics. So now they want to come here and one of the best paths of coming here is to participate in white supremacy, to participate in ethnic cleansing black Americans, foundational black Americans, um, FBAs, indigenous black Americans, uh, American descendants of slaves, indigenous blacks. And we got so many terms, the Moors, we have so many terms, but it all applies to the exact same people group, whether or not if it's status correction or not, none of that matters. It's still same people group, Israelites. It doesn't matter. It's still the same people group. So what I'm trying to get you guys to hear is, is you guys have to stop with this hands across America. Uh, we are the world and hands across the world. You guys have to stop with any form of coalition and you have to focus on yourselves. You have to stop leap bounding, leapfrogging and jumping over the heroes, the sheroes and the heroes that were on the United States American soil, thinking that thinking that thinking of Pan-Africanism and trying to see what someone did in another country and in another landmass is a form of endearment in which you want to apply 
to you to the citizens of the United States as it pertains to black citizens of the United States. Yes, we are learning very, very a great deal about what's happening on other land masses. But when you do with that, what you do anything, you also forget what has happened on your own landmass. You guys understand what I'm saying? You've all heard the saying, the smarter I the smarter y'all get, the dumber I get. The more you learn, the more you forget. It's just common sense. The reason why I give you guys the short is because whoever's teaching you guys, I'm not going to always say everybody is teaching you inappropriately, improperly, or misinformation. I'm trying to get you guys to cut through the noise. When you see those woods, are you able to differentiate the woods, the forest, the trees? Are you able to differentiate 20 trees, 30 trees, 100 trees, the forest, the woods? How are you able to analyze, differentiate, sift through, siphon that information and, and extract what's most important about that information? How are you able to go about it and understand the prevalence of what's happening? This is why I try to give you guys the short. Yes, you've seen how many videos I do. Yes, you know the topics I cover. I'm always targeting the men regardless of the examples that I use. The, t the examples are meant to get the men to understand you are the key. You are the prize. This whole thing is on your back. The reason why the pseudo community uses terms as queen mother goddess and black woman of all creation and civilization, genetically she might be, but physically she cannot dominate the environment. So even if she was created first, I don't want to go back that far, even if she was created first, she could not um, subdue, she could not manage, she could not take control of, she could not... Um, um, bring she could not bring the environment under her total control man was could she do a lot of things on her own absolutely she can that's without that's like without communicating this is why homeless women can be homeless now in the environment now there's things that 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 human being can do she's not weak just because she's female she's just weaker because she's female so when the male was introduced into the environment, first, second, third, doesn't matter. When he was introduced into the environment, he was the one that was able to subdue the land. He was, able, he was the one that was able to bring the land under his authority. And if he's able to bring the land under his authority, let's say both genders are able to bring the land under their authority. If both genders are able to bring the land up under their authority, it's a, it becomes a numbers game. It becomes a percentage. Who can do it more? Who can do it faster? Who can do it longer? Who can do it better? Who can do it more efficiently? Who can do it more effectively? Who doesn't need... You understand where I'm going? More, 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 more. So what eventually happens is, is if you allow nature to be your teacher... And not solely man, if you allow energy to be your teacher and not solely man, you will realize the reason why the man acquires the, the position or the throne is because he can do it longer, he can do it better, he can do it more effectively, he can do it more efficiently. The only thing that removes the man from his entire life source is the fact that we got war. We have people poisoning him. We have people going against him. We have things in the environment that are targeting him to shorten his lifespan. He doesn't die biologically just because biologically the most high all powerful said, I'm going to put a short lifespan on you and I'm going to put a longer lifespan on her. Her clock is going to run out quicker. Your clock is going to your clock is going to run out quicker. Her clock is going to go longer. That's not the science. The science is men fight other men for resources. And vagina is a resource, but it's not the major resource. Men fight each other for pleasure. Vagina is pleasure, 
but it's not the major pleasure. So when you are warring and when you're doing this and when you're doing that to acquire power, that's what we're fighting over, power. So men get taken out sooner because of power. That's environmental. That's socialization. That is not biology. That is not science. And the problem with all of these things is when you use all those fancy words, it makes the other gender feel like they have nothing to contribute. But what good am I for? Well, I have to be good for something more than sex. You are, but you don't want to do what you're good at or what you were purposed for. You want to do whatever he's doing. I want to skydive. I want to surf. I want to paint. I want to climb a tree. I want You want to do whatever he's doing. Because by default, power, penis envy. Women are the first to have penis envy. Not white supremacy. White supremacy comes around the line later. But women are the first to have penis envy. Power. Notice how the women aren't trying to com compete against the children for power. They're trying to compete against the children for emotional gratitude, affection, not for power. So reason why these things are being discreet is because you guys aren't doing the work. And a lot of you guys are simps and a lot of you guys are pussy whooped. So when you go out here and you give out this information, its intent is to say, Baby, I love you. I'll treat you right. I think you a goddess. I think you're the most important thing in the world. And when I look at you and I just get so good on the inside and you, I can do when you speak to her, you speak to her in a way that tries to appeal to her soft spots. When we speak to her, me, men, my type, personality type, when we speak to her, we don't speak to her soft spots. We speak to her logic. Follow the goddamn logic. The logic is what reigns supreme. When I'm dead and I'm gone and I'm no longer here, I need you to always reinforce the logic. You have to reinforce the logic. Well, why? That's what you use to protect my children. And unfortunately, my children extends beyond my last name my children extend beyond um my bloodline my children is my nation one man can get 400 women pregnant not one woman woman get 400 men pregnant but one man can birth an entire nation and that is a fact the reason why you got to do the information correctly because you can use one man to impregnate a lot of women. But you cannot use one woman to get pregnated by a lot of men. If you understand what I'm saying, we're talking about time. Yes, you can have one lady every nine months get impregnant by a multiple men. Yes, one lady every nine months to get pregnant by multiple men yes you can that takes time that's nine months nine months of gestation nine months of creation nine months but it is a easier and a shorter path to get one man to impregnate 400 women you can do that in a night you can do that in a day you can do that in a week you could do it in a month not nine months and that one man will create a nation. But when you listen to sense, when you listen to pseudoscience, when you listen to weaker men, their whole language pattern is to exalt the women. That means to bring them up. And you got to understand the intent. The intent is not solely just to bust a nut. The intent is mirrored behind. I don't want to do the work. So if I push you out there, if I uplift you, if I cater to you, if I you, 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 eventually what happens is I'm going to blame you for all that went wrong because 
you didn't do what you were supposed to do when you was on the throne. Well, if you was on the throne and you didn't do this and you didn't do that while you was on the throne, then what you should have did is say, I don't want the throne. But you never said you not wanted the throne. So I let you stay on the throne and I kept fighting for you to stay on the throne and you managed it wrong. But you never said I not wanted to be on the throne. And what I'm saying to you guys, if you can understand how I'm trying to tie it in. The reason why the men are going to interracial dating. The reason why the men are passport bros, which I don't disagree with. The reason why they're doing it is because they don't want to do the work that they're supposed to do to, to stop with all these coalition, co uh, coalitions. They're avoiding responsibility. They're abdicating the throne. I do not recommend these men come back to this batch of female. This batch of female will destroy everything we touch. Well, why? Because this batch of female knows what they're doing is wrong but even they don't want to fix it so what makes it what difference does it make if the men come back to try to help them fix it when the women are going to always undermine them the women are more afraid of white supremacy racism than they are in love with doing the right thing it ain't gonna happen you gotta leave this batch of women alone you have to leave the coalitions alone. You have to leave Pan-Africanism alone. You have to leave um, in social integration alone. You have to leave it alone because all of it is meant to undermine, destroy foundation of black Americans. All of it is meant to undermine and destroy the descendants of slaves here in America, here in North America. All of it's meant to undermine and destroy the, the freedmen. All of it is meant to undermine and destroy us all of it is a form of escapism getting high getting drunk sex multiple sex and not trying to do the right thing running from multiple jobs and not staying consistent all of it is a form of escapism and what i'm asking you is when you listen to this video about a black and brown coalition and how hispanics puerto ricans dominicans and mexicans and any kind of other spanish speaking origin people group are politically moving against black Americans. You have to understand they want access to white supremacy. They want access to white power. They want access to white economics. We don't. We want separate but equal. And the reasons why it's being shrouded in all these fancy words and the reason why you're just getting so confused is because I said it and I made the video. The reason why that makes sense to you to move left is because you're scared. And if they can come up with any plan that allows you to do what you want to do, you're in favor of it. I mean, I'm not in favor of it. I'm a fight for I'm a fight for what our ancestors did. I'm a fight for what I want. I'm a fight to protect my female, um, my children, my daughter, my sisters. I will even fight to protect my female neighbor. I'm putting it in context. But if I'm going to fight to protect the women, the women have to shut the fuck up, sit down, and watch how they move. I did not say be brain dead. I said follow the logic. And the logic doesn't give a fuck about how you feel. The logic is consistent. The principle. The logic. The logic reigns supreme. Follow the logic. But I, it's not about how you feel. The variable. The nuance. It's about the logic. What can we do that's going to save the majority of our children? Not some of our children, not the 1% of our children, not the 6% of our children, the bulk of our children. What can we do to save the bulk of our children? So that means to a certain extent, you're going to have to put that I feel, I feel, I feel in your pocket and sit on it. Do the research. Do the studies. Stop being dismissive. Stop thinking that you know it all. You spent your entire life trying to avoid that white boy. You spent your entire life trying not to work. You cannot become a PhD up against me. You can't. Just because you're able to read a little bit of video, watch a little bit of videos and read a few books. You can't come up against me. I, I put too much time in the game. I put too much skin in the game. You 
as a pupil, as a listener, it would be in your best bet to take at least three years of studying it, true and through, and then living it to see if it maps out, to see if it it, it has really some substance to it. Then you come back and you try to talk to me, debate me, or tell me where I'm wrong. Because I'm not wrong. We got work to do. And we must get at it. We got businesses we need to own so that we can employ our own. Even if we don't employ our own at making $800 to $1,000 a month, just get somewhere to employ our own. If a few of us are employed, a few of us aren't robbing and stealing. Do you get it? Warrior class, zoo, rise up. Warrior class, zoo, show up. Warrior class, zoo, stand up. Warrior class, zoo, smoke them out. Peace, blessings, and black love. Can you dig it? Can you dig it? Can you dig it? In this campaign, we are coming to get our check. Fair use at disclaimer. This site is for educational purposes only copyright disclaimer under section 107 of the copyright act of 1976 allowances made for fair use for purposes such as criticism comment news reporting teaching scholarship education and research